大家好，就是欢迎大家来。OK， 嗯、um, ，Welcome to this talk. Share the experience of using embedded develop development board. I'm Pan Jianhong. I、uh, works in and the OS Foundation right now. And、uh, this is my Twitter and GitHub account. And I will upload this slide to the slide share too. Um, yeah, I just come from come back from Europe, so if I respond any slowly, then that might be the jet lag、uh, jet lag issue. Okay, due to the pandemic in the past few years,、uh, lacking chipics has、uh, become a big problem for industry to produce the products and the services. Besides, many countries propose new policies to、um, do something like uh, uh, investigate the source of the products recently. Therefore, keeping the flexibility to, of the usage to maintain the robustness of productivity is an important skill.、Um, here is some well-known architectures. For example, the MCU PIC, the common x86 64-bit, and uh, uh, the widely used ARM, and、uh, another MCU AVR. Also, the new player RISC-V 32 and 64-bits, and more such as MIPS. And、whenever we want to develop applications on lost,、uh, for lost chips,、uh, we need to、uh, compile GCC and debug GDB.、Um, some people may use the Mac to maintain the、um, build process with Mac, and they are known as the tool chain. Or、um, if you、uh, have some embedded system, then you may need the OpenOCD and JTAG to do、uh, some things like flash and debug. You may also need the USB to serial while connecting to the、uh, embedded system's serial console, and each board has its own board support package (BSP)、um, If your host architecture is different from your target chip, then you need the cross compiler.、Um, they usually comes from the prefix with the architecture, then project, then the tool GCC, GDB, etc.、Um, this talk will have include some、uh, examples. The first one is the ARM MCU Cortex M4 with Newton's new Tiny SDK development board, and then the the other one is the RISC 532 bits MCU with the Cybeat Logan Nano board, and the CPU level we are talking about the ARM Cortex A72 core on Raspberry Pi 4B, and、uh, the RISC 564 bits with the QE Mu VM. Why use the QE Mu VM? Because I cannot find the real board. <laughs> okay, let's start from the MCU level first. ARM supp、uh, supplies the simplest ARM core with Cortex M0. If you need some、uh, special, for example, DSP instructions, they, then you can choose the Cortex M4 core.、Um, if you want some、uh, security issue,、um, you may choose the、um, Cortex M23 core with the Trust Zone security instructions. Okay,、um, here's the example of the、um, new Tiny SDK development board. My host is is,、uh, is an Arch Linux x64 bit system, and the target chip on the development development board is Newton's NUC472 chip, and it is an ARM Cortex M4 MCU. Therefore, I have to install a cross compiler to achieve with the prefix ARM non EBI, and Arch Linux has already、uh, provided the corresponding packages. Packages、uh, with、uh, uh, ARM non EBI being utils, GCC, Newlib, and GDB, and I also need the Open OCD to do the flash and debug things. I use the upstream Open OCD, and、uh, it must include、uh, these three commits at least. Actually, originally I cherry pick the downstream Newton's Open OCD's commit, and then arrange them. Discussed with、uh, upstream, and then、um, after review comments, I split the commits into these three、um, patches. The first one is reorder the part list of the original Newton's、um, NCU list. Then I added the support new Newton's Cortex M4 chips, including N541 and、uh, NUC444 and 472 series. Then I add the configuration file for the target chips into the OpenOCD. They have been、um, merged into the OpenOCD's、uh, master branch and will be included into next、uh, release. 
or you can just uh, use the downstream open uh, new tongues open OCD as well. But the uh, config configuration files name is different from the op uh, upstream one. And this is the picture of the new Tini SDK and USD 472 board. The right side is the new link me. It is um, JTAG link, uh, uh, JTAG interface. And the left side is the uh, real evaluation board, the new Tini EVB and USD 472. Um, new provides the chips. Uh, a new tone provides the chips uh, BSP on GitHub, S and it follows common microcontrollers software in interface standards at CMSIS from ARM. And uh, I git clone it directly from GitHub, and get into the uh, first uh, LED is simple as the Hello World things like that. But I also added a make file into the uh, LED sample folder, and. Uh, That's it. Here is it. Um, I will show it in detail later. Yep. Um. Weird. What happened to my computer? Sorry, take an issue. Okay, the make file must define some paths. F the first one is the CMS, li CMS library path. It is under library slash CMS as and the standard library and uh, the chips library here. And uh, we also must include the system clock's initial, initialize, initialization and the start, start up file and the link file in the um, make file. And I'm going to have a demo video. Here is it. And the first thing is let's get into the uh, BSP's um, folder and get into the LED sample. And here is it. And let's check the source file first. I control the LED pin with the PB10. And uh, build it with the make command. Here we here is it, and uh, have an uh, another terminal. Oh, it produced a uh, LED.EF file, and upload the uh, ELF to the board, and the board is uh, free running right now. The red LED is blinking, and I use the um, OpenLCD as the uh, debug server. Use the uh, new link me as the JTAG interface and the target chip new micro M4. And the debug server is listening on the local host 333 port. Have another terminal and get into the um, LED example again. And uh, use the ARM non EABIGDB to have the debug environment with the, um, the file we just built, LED.EF. 
and uh, we have the uh, debug environment right now and uh, connect to the debug server with the uh, target extended remote local host 333 port yes now the debug environment is connected to the board and the chip is freezed right now and uh, at some breakpoint, at the main source files, an uh, 86 line with the hot breakpoint, and another line, 88. And uh, we can continue it. Right now, the red LED is turned off, and it can continue. The red LED is light enough. Yes, and that's how, I, how, that's how we can do the debug things with the GDB and uh, the OpenLCD as the debug server. Um, yeah, we can leave the uh, debugging environment, then reset the chip, let it free run. Okay, back to the slide. Okay, let's talk about the RISC V NCU. Um, NDIS uh, provides the NDIS star V5 core. It supports the uh, RISC V 32 and the 64 as ISAS. And uh, it not only has the basic uh, features, but also provides the um, DSP CMD instructions as well. Here's the uh, Cyber Longer Nano board ex uh, example. And uh, because uh, different architectures, so I use the uh, uh, cross compiler with uh, with the prefix RISC five sixty four ELF, and the packages are RISC five sixty four ELF, Bing UTS, GCC, Nulib, and GDB, and I also need the Mac and the Open LCD as well. And the RISC five ELF GCC version is twelve point two, and uh, the compiler supports the uh, RISC five. 32 and 64 bits. Um, actually, the chip on Logan Nano is uh, GD32VF103 microcontroller, and it, prov it has the um, BSP on GitHub. However, it suggests use the Nucleus SDK as the BSP directly. So I get clone the uh, Nucleus SDK from GitHub and uh, add some modification. Uh, for for example, the first thing is I want to use the RISC 564's uh, bare metal tool chain, and uh, we have to set the ISS back to version 2.2, and uh, I won't like to use the open uh, upstream open LCD, so the conf corresponding configuration file is uh, gd32vf103.config, and uh, I use the um, FT232 as chip as the JTAG interface, so. Yeah, UN two three two H as uh as the configuration file for a JTAG interface. And let's have the um an another LED example. I copied it from the uh nuclear SDK's Hello World example as the LED example, then add some modification. Um I have a demo video for it as well. Here's it. And let's get into the nuclear SDK. And uh, the LED, uh, the first thing is to check the difference I make. Here is it. And especially this one, we have to set the um, ISS back version to 2.2. And here's the modification. Without the setting, uh, the GCC 12 will always uh, show up an error with and crying for extension the ICSR is not supported because the default uh, ISS spec version is another version for GCC 12. So we have to set it to uh, version 2.2. And uh, let's get into the LD sample and check the main source file first. I control the three color LEDs with um, the three pins. And um, also, I have to disable optimization with the O0 for debug. And uh, build with a command. 
with oh yeah here's it and uh, build build the LED sam example and uh, it produce the LED.EF and we can upload it to the board. The purple board is the JTAG interface. Um, uh, it has a chip FT232H. And the red board is the longer nano board. And then um, I use the OpenLCD as the debug server. Yes. And uh, as mentioned before, uh, UN232H is the uh, JTAG interface config and uh, the chip is a GD32VF103. And the debug server is listening on uh, port 3333 again. And have another terminal and get into the LD example again. Now this time um, we can use the um, RISC-5 64 ELF GDB with the LED.ELF to have the debug environment. And uh, connect it to the device server with the target extended remote localhost 333 port. Yes. And uh, at some point in the source file at the line 66, and uh, it used the uh, hardware breakpoints automatically and uh, more uh, lines for debug, 71 and 77. Okay, let's continue it. Now we can see the LED is a red light. And then next step, uh, it becomes the um, blue, a uh, green light. And then blue. Okay, and then we can list the corresponding calls here and leave the debug environment. Okay, that's how I did the debug things with the OpenLCD and GDB on the long, uh, with the Logan Nano. Okay, back to the slide here. Oh. This is the pin map of the longer nano board uh, and uh, it indicates the JTAG interface here. Let's talking about the um, higher level CPU level uh, with booting Linux system. Uh, when the power on the chips, uh, the firmware of the chips uh, starts to work and it loads the bloater and hand over to the broader. Then broader will load the kernel image, then hand over to the kernel image. Or some system may make the uh, firmware load the kernel image and hand over to the kernel image directly. And whenever a Linux kernel starts wrong and booting, it will try to find the first process in it uh, in the f uh, root file system. And here's an example that, um, oh sorry, uh, because I want to uh, build a Linux kernel for uh, ARM64 architecture. Uh, so I use the cross compiler tool chain with the cro um, prefix ARC64 Linux GNU, and uh, of course ARC64 Linux GNU GCC as the compiler to compile the um, st stable Linux. I get clone the stable Linux directly and uh, use the default uh, ARM64 default config as the baseline, then tweak the uh, build config with the menu config, then build the kernel. And let's prepare a blank test for later uh, experiment. It has two partitions. And here's the command to boot uh, um, a QEMU VN that's uh, using the kernel we just built and the blank disk. When the kernel boots up, it stops at an error showing no working init found. And it tries to find the, find the first as being init, then etc init, then bing init. That's why it's the bing shell init as the init process. But it cannot find it because we just gave it the blank disk. The init process is the uh, first process started during booting 
and then it is the daemon process that continues running until the system is shut down. And here is the some well-known init. The first one is system five init, and then upstart. And the most widely used now is the uh, system D, or you can choose the simpler open RC. And some people may use the busy box as the init directly. And here's a, an example. Uh, on my laptop, the bin init is a uh, is softening to the um, uh, system D. And I also prepare the um, uh, storage layout here as the uh, root uh, for the boot partition and the root partition. The boot partition includes the bootloader and the kernel image initial manifest and device tree blob. And the root partition uh, has the root file system, of course. And the init should be in the SBIN or BIN folder. And here's the idea to uh, build a system image containing root file system. The first step is have a raw image, then format the raw image with designed partition layout, and the mount the root partition with, to the QEM UVN by according to your architecture. Then install the systems package and the part applications into the partition. Uh, this action is well known as uh, uh, bootstrap. And then pre pre prepare config files for uh, init process into the root partition. We also need the etc F F FS tab for mount point and uh, have to prepare config files for other process such as a network DHCP DNS and mount the root partition. The step five to seven depends on the hardware and case by case. I've already built a kernel on GitHub uh, using the action CI and also build a system image with the uh, Alpine container images on my GitHub repository build image. And uh, this thing is the same as the, the build step just mentioned before. If you want more information, you can check out these two repositories for more uh, detailed information. And uh, I use the uh, um, GitHub to release the my e uh, image as well. It, it released uh, QEMU. ARM64 and the RISC-5 64 and uh, um, Raspberry Pi ARM64 images. And uh, here is the uh, demo video. For Raspberry Pi. Okay, now um, I connected to the I connect the um, my host to the Raspberry Pi board with the uh, USB to serial console, and uh, here is the um, Linux kernel boots up on the uh, Raspberry Pi. The, it is the image I, it I released on the GitHub, GitHub release page. And give it some time. Okay, the system is trying to boot. Okay, um, the root log into a root account, and uh, you can see it is a Alpine Linux system because I use the Alpine uh, container image to bootstrap. And uh, here is the kernel message, and uh, check it in detail with the less. And uh, this is the uh, kernel we, we built, uh, version 6.4.2. And uh, here's the corresponding boot command here. Yep. Back to the slide. Um, I also have some talks before. Uh, they are, let's trace Linux kernel with KGDB. I trace the uh, kernel with, with the KGDB on Raspberry Pi 4B and uh, launch the first process in Linux system. These slides are s uploaded to the slideshow too. And let's talk about the RISC-5 64-bit architecture. Uh, cross compiler tool chain is the uh, RISC-5 64 Linux GNU GCC and use the same Linux stable kernel. And uh, also use the default uh, RISC-5 com build config as the baseline, then tweak it with a menu config and build a kernel. 
uh, to have the QEMU VN, I install the QEMU system RISC-V and the QEMU system RISC-V uh, firmware. It includes the OpenSBI for this RISC-V. And uh, boot the, I can use this command to boot the QEMU RISC-V 64 VN with the uh, kernel we just built and uh, the image downloaded from the release page. And here's some, some uh, build config we have to take care. The first thing is uh, we have to enable the SOC vert for a QEMU VM. And for debug, we have to enable debug info and GDB scripts and frame pointers options and uh, disable debugging for reduced option. Um, if we want to uh, have some, um, to have the uh, debug feature, uh, debug server with a QEMU VM, uh, we can append the dash capital S and dash small s to QEMU command. The dash capital S means the free CPU at startup, and the dash small s means uh, accept a GDB connection as, uh, with the TCP port, 1234 port. Okay, let's go into the demo video. Risk five. Here is it, and uh, I uh, try to boot the QEMU VM with the debug feature uh, dash small s and the dash capital S. And here is it. Okay, and uh, here is the uh, Linux folder, Linux kernel folder, and uh, we build the kernel. So we have the VM Linux. Let's debug with the RISC-564 Linux a new GDB VM Linux. And uh, connected to the debug server, target extended remote local host, 1234 port. Okay, now we have the debug environment connecting to the de uh, QMU's debug server with the Linux kernel. And at the breakpoint, at, uh, at the uh, virtual network interface, probe function, net probe. And let it continue, let it, the system boot up, and uh, it, it stops at the uh, vert net probe function as, it, as expected. And uh, here's the corresponding code here, and we can have a backtrace, of course. Yes. And let's say something continue boot. Okay, log into a root account again, and it's Alpine Linux system, and uh, have the uh, kernel message, and check it in detail with the less again. Okay, this is the RISC-5 uh, Linux kernel with version 6.4.2, and here's the boot command here. Okay, power off. Back to the slide. Okay, here's a reference uh, for more information. Any questions? So, any questions? If no, I have a pet desk. Uh, if you are interested in AVR, then you can use the cross compilation, uh, compile tool train with the AVR GCC, GDB, and the AVR DVC. And the fetch tool is the AVR Dude. And I also prepared some practice on my GitHub repository AVR practice if, you, if you're interested on it. AVR is the chip uh, widely used on Arduino's classic boards. Yes. And actually, AVR IDE use these tools to composite it. ID as well. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>